There are reports of heavy fighting at the Azovstal steel plant in the besieged port city of Mariupol. Ukrainian forces inside the plant say Russian soldiers have stormed the facility. That's something Russian officials have denied. Now, the reports come as a three-day ceasefire announced by Moscow is due to begin on Thursday to allow more civilian evacuations. Azovstal is the last stronghold of Ukraine's resistance in the city. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said a prolonged ceasefire is vital to bring more people to safety. We hope to continue rescuing people from Azovstal, from Mariupol. There are still civilians left there, women, children. To save them, we need to continue the ceasefire. The Ukrainian side is ready to provide it. It takes time just to lift people out of those basements, out of those underground shelters. Now, Russia denies reports that it is trying to storm the steel plant. Emmanuel Shaz is part of DW's team in Ukraine, and she has more now on those latest developments in Mariupol. Exactly. Russia denied us that its troop uh, was uh, storming the plant, but it's something that Ukrainian uh, authorities have uh, said uh, overnight. So what we know is that there has been a heavy uh, shelling over uh, the steel plant, over the Azovstal steel plant. What we also know is that there are still hundreds of civilians, uh, along uh, thousands of soldiers uh, who are trapped in that steel plant. They haven't seen uh, daylight for two months months evacuations there are rendered very difficult because of the constant uh, artillery fight because of the constant shelling uh, which makes it uh, for a lot of uh, rubbles to go through before uh, uh, civilians can be reached and evacuated yesterday the united nations said that 344 people had been successfully evacuated from the mariupol area towards uh, zaporizhia uh, but uh, hopes for more evacuations of course fade uh, at at a time of uh, heavy fights fighting on Mariupol, as is the case as of right now. That was DW's Emma Shaz reporting from Lviv. Now, meanwhile, Ukraine's armed forces are claiming victories in the eastern Kharkiv region after taking back several towns there. But airstrikes on the second largest city, Kharkiv, continue, and Moscow's offensive is taking its toll. An amusement park rocked by missiles in Kharkiv. CCTV footage captured these shocking images. Ukrainian authorities say this was one of dozens of Russian airstrikes, an attempt to heighten the Kremlin's eastern offensive. As Ukrainian forces retake some villages in the Kharkiv region, scenes of destruction greet them. After spending two months under Russian control, Residents are still in shock. We lived in the basement for two months. They wouldn't let us out. We were sitting in the basement. We didn't have anything to eat or drink. There was no water. We were getting dirty black water from the well and we drank it. To the west, in Lviv, a power plant was hit. Russian authorities have confirmed they are targeting infrastructure including railway lines. They say the West is using them to send arms to Ukraine. And for more, we can speak now to Ruth Diamond. She's a Russia analyst at the Department of War Studies at King's College London. Dr Diamond, welcome to DW. Can we start um, with the battle for the last holdout in Mariupol, the Azovstal steel plant? Now, tactically, this battle is like to be, likely to be very different, isn't it, and difficult uh, for Russian forces who are trying to dislodge the Ukrainian uh, forces who know the site very well. How would you say um, is it likely to play out? Well, it's, it's very hard to tell, of course. <clears throat> Excuse me. But um, what we do know is that, um, that a lot of this is taking place underground, that, um, that the plant has been reinforced over a long time, has been designed to withstand a siege. Um, but clearly, Russia is now committing to, to taking the plant. So... Um, one has to assume that eventually it is most likely that they will be successful, but it's not going to be easy for them, as, as far as we can tell. 
Um, now, Russia is expected to escalate uh, its attacks in the run-up to May 9th, which is obviously an important day in Russia, marking the Soviet Union's defeat of Nazi uh, Germany. How important would you say is it for Russian forces to be able to declare some kind of victory in Ukraine? Um, and, and uh, you know, what means do you think that they will be willing to go to to secure this victory? Yes, I mean, clearly they, they do seem to be strongly committed to being able to declare some kind of victory um, on May the 9th. And um, it looks as if what they, they might do is declare Mariupol taken, which is perhaps one reason why we're seeing this attempt um, uh, that we've just been talking about now. Um, there are reports that Russian uh, media figures are turning up in the city, that uh, ground is being prepared to facilitate a victory parade. Um, so that may be one place where, where they can attempt to declare victory. In a sense, it's quite, um, it's easier for Putin than it would otherwise be because he's really set the terms for this war. Um, and so he can declare victory um, really when he feels like it. And given the control that, uh, that the Kremlin has over Russian media, really it's, it's pretty likely that if Putin says that some kind of victory has been achieved, um, that's what the Russian media are going to accept. So, so he can really set the terms for this, I think. Do you think that we are going to see a declaration of uh, all-out war from the Kremlin? It's, it's very difficult to call because, of course, one thing that we've seen over the last few months is, is how the, the Kremlin can do the unexpected. Um, but uh, it's not necessarily something we might expect. It's, there's no obvious benefit, I think, to a, a, an all-out declaration of war. Um, you know, we, we've seen an increase in, in fighting in certain areas, and it's possible that um, Belarus may now be being used to put some pressure on Ukraine in, in the north. Um, it, it's not totally clear what the advantage would be um, of a declaration of war uh, on the 9th. And indeed, that, that could prove to be unpopular in Russia. So I think the Kremlin is going to have to be careful about that. Dr Ruth Diamond from King's College London, thank you so much. Thank you.